Hello YouTube, this is Aaron and I'm back with another Game Boy Zero build and I'm going to be talking today about the new Kite Circuit Sword. Yeah, I'll be using that instead of the Kite Super All-in-One like I did in my previous video. Uh, since my last video I've actually built one of these Circuit Swords and I, and I actually built another Super All-in-One. Um, this was my last Super All-in-One that I built. It was a kind of a black and white theme. It's got the four front buttons, the black bezel. Um, I got the Bizzle from uh, Kitchbent, but there's some other great options now that actually have some text and things. Um, it's got the two back buttons, and I use a bracket by Eric G on the uh, Pseudomod forums. And then the stickers I got from Yaya, and I have a Dextech battery in there, and a black cartridge, and uh, you know everything actually worked out great, and I really like this guy. But I thought, you know what? I really like the idea of Kite's new board. Uh, Kite's new board, the Circuit Sword, is an evolution on his old circuit or uh, super all-in-one board and what he's basically done is he has stuck a raspberry pi 3 in there and made it super easy to do he's also made it uh, a lot cleaner and added hdmi so there's a lot of new features here um, the price is actually really good uh, it's after about the exchange rate in the u.s winds up being about 200 dollars. and uh, i mean i know that seems high but from what you're getting and the quality of everything it's great so on the left side here of the screen you'll see actually all the parts that he includes which is a screen some wires a ribbon cable a speaker uh, the pi 3 compute module um, this power button board a, a side or back button board or back button board here and then this, we have this back board that's actually got the uh, ports and everything on it and then of course the main board um, the main board is a thing of beauty we'll talk a little bit about that really quick um, let's see if I can get this all focused up but basically you have a slot right there a socket for a Raspberry Pi CM3 or compute module 3 and you quite literally just take the compute module here and attach it like that and voila done no soldering like you had to do with a pi zero on the board so honestly this is a super easy game boy build you can do this probably in a weekend maybe you know if you're really experienced you can get this done in probably three four hours um I, mine took longer than that but i i was paying attention to a lot of different details so um all the soldering you're gonna have to do is really just this little backboard and and that's the the rear button board um and you just literally solder wires to one of these connectors and then the connector plugs into the board and that's it so let's talk some more about this main board here uh, what does it have it has everything really right you got your micro sd you've got a usb c port for charging you've got charge and boost circuitry you've got the safe shutdown feature you've got wi-fi and bluetooth uh, usb hub uh, arduino teensy connectors uh, uh, microcontroller to handle all the buttons and uh you know usb audio with audio out um and like i said you've got hdmi out now and of course on the other side you've got the uh, lcd connector and the you know, button pads and everything really just a great solution and some status leds and it comes with the same dpi lcd 320 by 200 as the previous one and it comes with a speaker this time and a little heat sink for the Pi Compute module, which we, uh, you, you can get the optional fan. His next kit of this actually comes with the fan. I'm deciding I'm actually not going to do a fan. Um, I want to try and do kind of a passive cooling. I'm going to use a bigger heat sink that I bought. This is a like a one inch by five millimeter heat sink and it's a black anodized. So it should actually be better in a passive cooling environment. And then, uh, let's see. I think I talked a little bit about the power switch. This little guy, tiny little power button board, is a uh, nice little all-in-one solution for, it's got the mode button, power button on a nice circuit board that you can just easily mount. And you can either hot glue that in or you can get some 3D printed mounts, which I will discuss in a second. Um, the one downfall, um, not, it's not really a downfall, but it's just kind of something to be aware of, is that with this new design, have you have HDMI out, you lose the analog volume controller. So on the, super all-in-one board here I have this analog volume wheel that's where micro HDMI goes now so what I've done what he allows for is a digital volume rocker switch right here which I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to focus on up maybe and I've soldered that onto the board and you can actually use that in place of the analog volume controller and it just kind of winds up 
on the case it'll wind up kind of down here by the d-pad and it works okay it works good otherwise you can just hold that mode button down and use d-pad up and down for volume so like i said on the left is everything you get and it doesn't leave you with a whole lot that you need to buy you need a a case some silicone pads some buttons maybe some 3d printed parts if you want to make life easier which i do so i did and also a battery which i don't have in the picture but i'm using a 12 5050 battery which is a 4000 milliamp battery which will fit perfectly with no modification at all to the rear battery tray um let's see just to kind of talk roughly about some where i got things and, and why um i'm going with a super famicom style so i've got the you know red green yellow blue buttons i got these from retromodding.com i also got the case from retromodding.com this is their higher quality case it's um a little bit more expensive than the kind of generic Chinese ones, but it's made in Japan on a, on a really higher end injection molding process. I, I will no say that honestly, it feels better than the other cases. There are hardly any gaps in things. The text is really sharp, um, but it comes bare bones. I mean, you do not get silicone buttons, pads. You don't get you know any of the metal pieces or anything or screws. So you'll want to make sure you have those. If you notice too, it has no label here that says Game Boy. And that's probably because if it's made in Japan, Nintendo's in Japan, that's probably a copyright issue they don't want to deal with. I get it. Um, kind of a bummer, but on the other hand, I think I'm gonna make a, a nice decal to go over here to say like, you know, Circuit Sword or something. I mean, there, there are people in the forums on Pseudomod who've already done that. So I am just going to utilize what somebody else has done and credit them here. So back to the 3D parts. We've got the Hooli Hoo bracket again, and this guy is just for holding the screen in place. Gives you the button wells for your X and Ys. I put the brass standoffs in here, just you know, melted them in with soldering iron. Makes it so you can you know assemble and disassemble the case many times without damaging the, the plastics. Uh, I've got the back button board bracket, which let's see here. This is actually done by Eric G as well, but he provides the STL files for this for free now. And this is used for Kite's little back bracket. Ooh, that got a little crazy. Uh, board that he includes. So that's a nice little freebie, basically. Um, and then this guy from Huli Who also is a power switch mounting board. Now that's getting... There we go. And the power switch bracket it's really cool you just screw the power switch into this and then this screws into the case so you don't have to actually have uh, really much hot glue at all i mean this build gets down to the point where it's it's pretty turnkey now um so that's all my parts and like i said except for the battery but i can't wait to kind of dig into this i'm, I'm going to and uh, I will go ahead and document the whole thing and, and put another video up just like my first one because uh, it seems like everyone really liked that. And I, I will say that honestly, after I, I've already built one of these systems, it's fantastic. The speed is quick. I mean, the Pi 3 boots up probably in a third of the time as the Pi Zero, just everything's very fluid. It's the way to go. I mean, these solutions make it just so much easier and if you've never done any of this before this is probably the way to go honestly i mean i've done a lot of modding and a lot of builds of things and honestly i'm just getting to the point where it's nice to have things easy and as you can see this is kind of that just kind of snaps right in there i mean what a perfect fit and uh i mean lots of support for this stuff so Definitely check these things out, uh, and uh, I guess stay tuned, and I will show you how this all turns out. And uh, thank you very much for watching.